Welcome to the Climate Week NYC Sustainability Shorts series, a quick fire set of interviews where we get insights on how companies are driving climate action. Today we're joined by John Colas, Partner and Vice Chairman, Financial Services Americas at Oliver Wyman. Welcome, John. Thank you very much, Angela. Delighted to be here. And thank you and the Climate Group for your leadership on climate action and for, of course, your leadership in organizing Climate Week. Thank you. Oh my gosh, thank you for joining us. Um, so on to our first question. Leadership on climate has changed so much in recent years, but we're still falling short on targets. How do you think climate leaders need to change? And what is Oliver Wyman doing differently to demonstrate this? Thank you, Angela. Well, what I would say in general is that we are continuing to see leaders making meaningful, meaningful commitments. And what we really believe needs to happen today is that we need to continue to move beyond commitments in building capabilities that go beyond the current commitments and really translate those commitments into business practices and operations. So from a leadership perspective, we do see leaders needing to lead with purpose, to build confidence throughout their organizations by demonstrating progress through small leaps of faith, and then making and executing on even bigger commitments as they build the track record of progress and provide more clarity around what they are achieving and what their purpose and vision is for the future. We also think that organizations need to be, move beyond their own structures and engage a broader stakeholder group. And this would include the public sector. And the reason for that is really to help create the market conditions that will promote and drive real change. In terms of our firm and the work that we're doing, we really are focused on helping our clients pursue what we refer to as commercially smart transition plans. And that involves defining and helping to execute a clear roadmap that has specific objectives, interim milestones, and that is underpinned by robust data and analytics. And for leaders, it really is mobilizing their organization to deploy all of their capabilities in their finance functions, in their operating uh, capabilities, and importantly, in their customer relationships to achieve the outcomes aligned with their broader climate objectives. And finally, I would just say that uh, we work closely with partners like the Climate Group to develop thought leadership to inform decision makers. And at this upcoming Climate Week in New York, we will be launching a playbook as research partners for the Climate Group that will speak specifically to corporate leaders on how to enable a commercially smart climate transition. And this builds on a series of interviews we're conducting with corporate climate action leaders who are sharing their lessons learned and the important successes they've realized and still some of the challenges they face in driving the transition within their own companies. So we're hopeful that you'll all have a chance to read this research and benefit from the insights of so many climate action leaders. That's fantastic. Um, and you mentioned, uh, you know, many of the other organizations you work with, you know, how are you working with these other organizations as part of your drive to support climate action? Um, and, you know, how are, you know, the specifics of how you're doing this? Sure. Now, happy to elaborate, Angela. The way we view it is that we see climate change as the ultimate complex collective action challenge of our time. And as such, it requires that we work with multi-stakeholder groups across the whole of industry. It's not one firm or one company that's going to make this change tangible and real. It's going to be through the collective action of a broad base of stakeholders and engaged uh, communities and citizens. And it, as such, we continue to invest in our work with a, a wide range of industry collaborations. And those collaborations go beyond our specific uh, project work for our clients. So currently, we are very proud to be working with the World Economic Forum on an initiative which is referred to as financing the transition to a net zero future. 
And it's very much a multi-stakeholder initiative that brings to the table in as well as the community to think about how do we accelerate the mobilization of capital finance, uh, new breakthrough technologies that will help decarbonize hard to abate sectors. We're also proud to be serving as the knowledge partner to the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. And recently we, we've supported the publication of a series of recommendations and provo proposed guidance on developing uh, net zero transition plans. And we hope that's an important contribution to the industry in thinking through developing and executing around transition plans. And then lastly, we enjoy the privilege to serve as the strategic advisor to the Task Force on Climate Related Financial Disclosures, otherwise known as the TCFD. And as we all appreciate, the TCFD has played a critical role in advancing market transparency in climate disclosures and informing the investment community. So those are three of the many collaborations we have underway with industry. And lastly, I would just add that we work with um, other important actors, including research institutes, as well as advanced data and analytic providers. And when we step back and think about Climate Week NYC, we really see it as a wonderful, pivotal time to connect with climate and sustainability, sustainability leaders from across the globe, really learn from each other's experiences in driving the transition to net zero. And we see it as very much an opportunity to innovate and create new collaborations with a shared vision toward an orderly transition uh, of the global economy. No, that's wonderful to hear. I mean, um, and great to, to learn more about the role that Climate Week NYC plays in your ability to do this. I mean, tell us more. We'd love to hear. Sure. So Climate Week, as I said, it's a great convening moment to bring together leaders. And as I expressed, this problem is more than one brainful. It's a challenge that requires the best and sharpest minds from around the world to work together, to work across disciplines, and to bring together the most appropriate uh, approaches, structures, policies, frameworks, incentives to really drive the transition that we're all hoping to be orderly and smooth. And as such, the dialogue and exchange of views and perspectives with practitioners is incredibly valuable in shaping that agenda and sharing best practices and accelerating progress, which we know is, is quite important at this time. Thank you, John. No, that's that's really, really helpful. Um, on to our next question. What would be your message to younger people watching this who might be skeptical of the ability of companies to stick to these commitments? No, that's an excellent question, Angela. And my message would be straightforward and simple. And that would simply be, please do not underestimate the influence you can exercise. And as I step back and think about your question more broadly, young people can keep companies accountable through the choices they make as voters, as consumers, as entrepreneurs, and as employees. And going into it a little bit further, with respect to voting, what I can say is on the policy front, it's absolutely essential that young people engage in the decision-making processes. Um, only half of the youth voted in the last U.S. election. And to change the system, one must engage with it. So exercising our uh, right to vote, I think, is, is critical. Beyond that, as consumers, by choosing sustainable services and products, young people are creating pr pressure and incentives for businesses to act sustainably. And some of the research we've done as a firm uh, estimates that essentially half of 18 to 24 year olds consider climate change the most important issue of our time. And that has lots of implications. So finally, as employees, young people can choose to work for or even create companies with climate objectives interwoven in their business mission and strategy. By 2025, millennials will represent 75% of the global workforce. So this presents an immense opportunity for businesses that lead on climate 
to attract and retain this uh, special talent. And for this workforce, in turn, it's an opportunity to influence constructively from within their employers to really shape that future. And just in closing, I would just say, we're all custodians of our planet and we need to work together to really create that sustainable future uh, for our next generation. Uh, I love it. I couldn't be better said. Uh, that concludes our interview. To join more of the discussion, make sure to sign up to Climate Week NYC, September 19th through the 25th. Thank you so much for joining us today, John. It was so wonderful to have you along. Now, thank you so much, Angela. And look forward to seeing you at Climate Week. Same here.